Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Journalism and New Media Studies, SOJNMS, Diploma, Postgraduate Diploma Programs, Postgraduate Diploma in Audio Program Production, PGDAPP, MJM001 Introduction to Broadcasting and Programming, Block 1 Radio Broadcasting, An Introduction, Unit 2 Microphones, Audio Mixer and Monitoring System. 2.0 Introduction. As you are aware, in the field of audio production, the medium of sound conveys the content of the program. When we say, sound, it encompasses all the categories of sounds we are listening to in a variety of situations. Hence, it is important that as a producer, you should have adequate knowledge about sounds and the chain of equipment so that, if needed, you should be in a position to operate at least the basic functions. You can carry out editing and mixing once the chain of equipments is made operational by a technical person. Even if a technical person is available for carrying out the tasks of recording, editing and mixing, you can get the desired results only when the chain is properly understood and you are comfortable with the equipments. In this unit, we shall introduce the basic components in the sound recording chain, such as microphones, audio mixer and monitoring system. We shall discuss their various applications without going into highly technical details. 2.1 Objectives After reading this unit, you should be able to Identify the principles of picking of sound waves Distinguish between different types of microphones Describe the basic features and applications of audio mixer And Explain the functions of monitoring system 2.2 Microphone A microphone is the first link in the chain of sound recording. The word, microphone, consists of two words, micro, i.e., very tiny or small, and phone, meaning sound. Since very small variations of sound levels are picked up by it, this is why it is called a microphone. Microphones are made in different sizes and shapes depending on their applications in different conditions. There are varieties of microphones available for picking up sounds depending upon the use, such as, domestic, public address system and professional microphones for production work. We shall examine the principles and different types of microphone generally used for professional recordings. But before we attempt to know various microphones and how to use them, we should learn what is a microphone and how it functions. We know that one type of energy can be transferred into other types of energy. For example, wind energy can be transferred mechanically to drive a water drawing machine. By rotating a coil of wire in a magnetic field, magnetic energy is transformed into electrical energy. That is how we get electricity. Any mechanism which transfers energy to another type of energy is called a transducer. Similarly, in the field of sound recording, the sound energy which is called acoustic energy can be transformed to electrical voltage or electrical signals by the Use of a microphone. A microphone is a device which enables the sounds arriving at it to give out corresponding variations of electrical signals or voltage. Hence, microphone is a transducer. A microphone has a very light and highly sensitive diaphragm or a thin sheet suspended in a magnetic field. Any sound wave impinging on the diaphragm produces movements in the magnetic field and carries electrical signals through the coil on the diaphragm. This electrical signal or voltage is very small and other chain of equipments bring up the low signals to the desired electrical voltage. This enables us to hear through a loudspeaker or recording on a magnetic tape. The basic point to be understood here is that the sound waves are pressure. Waves implying that there is a change in atmospheric pressure surrounding the diaphragm, and due to this, the movement of diaphragm takes place. Based on this, different types of microphones have been designed which can be used for specific purposes. 2.2.1 Principles of Picking Up Sound Waves There are two principles of picking sound waves by the microphone. These are pressure operated and pressure gradient. In the pressure operated microphone, the relative change of pressure due to sound waves is the main factor for picking the sounds. In the pressure gradient type, the difference of pressure of sound waves on the two sides of diaphragm is the main factor for picking the sounds. Pressure operated microphone. The diaphragm of microphone acts as per the variations of the pressure created by the sound waves. Hence, the diaphragm of pressure operated microphone is open to the sound waves on one side only. 
In this type of microphone, the sounds from all directions are picked up. This method of picking the sound waves sensitive to sounds from all directions by a microphone is termed as omnidirectional microphone. When pickup pattern of microphone is written as below, then it is called polar diagram of the microphone. Look at the screen. Pressure gradient microphone. In this type of microphone, the sound waves acting on the diaphragm on front side are also acting on the back. This means that the diaphragm is open to both sides, so that pressure difference takes place for the sound waves arriving at the microphone. The difference in the pressures applied on both the sides results in transferring the pressure variations as voltage variations. This is achieved q yaw thin ribbon suspended vertically in a magnetic field, open on both sides to sound waves. The variations of voltage in the ribbon due to sound waves is fed to the necessary chain of equipment to increase the strength of the electrical signal. Look at the screen. The pickup pattern of the microphone is sensitive to the front and rear side for picking sound waves. Sound waves coming from the sides are least picked up by the microphone because it picks up sound waves from the front and back only. The polar diagram is like figure of 8. This type of microphone is called bi-directional microphone. The polar diagrams give an idea of how the microphone picks sound from a particular direction or from all directions. Since the basic principle of picking sounds is either omni or bi-directional, a combination of these in designing microphones gives a variety of polar diagrams. This means that apart from omni and bi-directional, we can have different polar diagrams. By proper designing with the combination of both omni and bi-directional pickup patterns, we get a new polar diagram or picking pattern called as cardiod. Cardiod mics. In this type of microphone, the rear side of mic is less sensitive. That means whichever side the microphone is less sensitive gives us less pickup of sounds from that direction or area. Figure 3. Dot. Polar diagram of cardiod microphone. Look at the screen. By altering the designing of a microphone, we get different directional patterns, such as hypercardiod, supercardiod and ultra-directional microphones for a narrower pickup. This type of microphone can be pointed to a smaller area for pickup like a gun pointing at the target. That is why highly directional microphones are also called shotgun microphones. So far we have seen that the manner in which microphone picks up sounds. Let us see the methods adopted for converting the energy from sound waves, that is acoustic energy, to electrical voltage or signal. We have seen in the beginning that microphone is a device for converting the energy from sound waves that is acoustic energy to electrical voltage or signal. Why is this conversion to electrical voltage required? This is because of the equipments used to transfer the sound waves for recording, playing back and for listening through loudspeakers. All this involves the use of electrical signals. These electrical signals exactly correspond to the sound waves being picked up. 2.2.2 Types of Microphones From the above discussion we understand that sound waves have to give corresponding electrical signals by the use of microphones. There are many methods to achieve this objective. Certain crystals under pressure can give voltage output or when a coil vibrates in a magnetic field or when static charge of a condenser is varied, then also we get electrical voltage output. At present, the vast uses of varying electrical charge or moving coil in a magnetic field are applied in designing of microphones. We will briefly learn about their working. 1. Moving coil or dynamic microphone. In the moving coil microphone, also called as dynamic microphone, a coil is attached to the diaphragm. The diaphragm with the coil is surrounded by the magnetic field. This coil moves in the enclosed magnetic field due to sound waves activating the diaphragm. In turn, a small voltage is generated by the coil and the same is taken out as microphone output which is processed in various stages. In moving coil microphone, different directional patterns can be obtained for different applications. Look at the screen. 3. Lapel, lavalier microphone. Where microphone is not to be noticed nor block the view of a person speaking, the microphone with larger dimensions poses a problem. For this reason, lapel or lavalier microphones have been developed and are being extensively used. You would have seen various speakers having a tiny microphone clipped onto coat, shirt or wearing them as a pendant around the neck which is why it is called lapel or lavalier. It generally has a length of I to 1.4,
with diameter of 0.4 to 0.7. This small mic can be kept hidden and even if seen, is not noticed that much. Look at the screen. Various educational program projects have an inbuilt provision for listeners' participation. Radio's primary role as a public service broadcaster is crucial for a developing society. However, a new programming orientation is urgently needed to avoid unimaginative and heavy broadcasts. All programming should be meaningful, interesting, entertaining, relevant, and imaginative. In the words of P. C. Joshi, we have to ensure that communication media does not widen the hiatus between the rich and poor, town and village, elite and the mass, men and women, center and periphery. 1.6 Radio Programming Today and tomorrow. Radio programming is undergoing intense metamorphosis these days, keeping in view the challenge thrown by 24-hour television programming. In the recent years, there is a quantum jump in the media channels, particularly TV channels. Most of them are commercial channels dishing out entertainment programs. Since television offers multifaceted and multifarious fare on national networks, in a commercialized media environment, radio receives less attention. However, some positive developments have taken place which hold great future for radio broadcasting. One such major development in the field of radio in this country is the end of government's monopoly of the airwaves. The demand for permission to establish private channels has been made from time to time, but the Supreme Court gave the landmark judgment that the airwaves cannot be controlled solely by the government. With the setting up of the Prasar Bharati Broadcasting Corporation, there is a change in the situation. The advent of private radio broadcasting has become a reality. The introduction of frequency modulation, FML channels in metro cities is another development which has brought in a breath of fresh air in their content and style of presentation. More than 70% Roddy Tilda, listening in the UOS, today is on the FM stations and the same trend is catching up in India Tilda as well. While 50% radio stations in U.S. are commercial, in India, the trend towards commercialization is limited but is catching on. A number of private operators have been given licenses to operate FM channels. The FM channels that have come up recently are at major centers addressing the modem, urban youth. However, FM channels mean much more than mere pop and film music for the entertainment of a privileged few. The Gyanbani network allotted to IGNOW has started broadcasting programs on education and development from several cities. The number of such channels is bound to increase in the years to come. Under a scheme devised by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, educational institutions can get licenses to operate radio stations for educational purposes. Yet another significant development in radio broadcasting all over the world is the concept of community radio. It has come to be known as the narrow casting, as opposed to broadcasting. The introduction of the community radio is a milestone not only in reaching out to the remotest area but also persuading the citizen to share in the vision and excitement of development. With the avowed objective of developing itself as community broadcasting, the local radio strives to demolish the division between the broadcaster and the audience and serve as a link between the citizen and the extension agencies. In course of time, these community radio stations would act as a catalytic agent in galvanizing the local community into action for their OWP development. In India, this concept can be effectively harnessed keeping in view the variety in region, background, culture, language, education and economic status. Community radio stations can be used to project and reflect the needs, desires, problems, joys and sorrows of a society clearly defined within a limited area. For example, the need to construct a new road, remove stagnant water, put down gang warfare or whatever problem is being faced by the people in a specific area, could be dealt with in a meaningful way, fruitful negotiations could be held by dot the affected people with area development workers, local authorities and voluntary agencies. Similar background of the people facilitates problem solving and imparting instructions on various development related issues. Technological developments are taking place at a meteorite pace globally. The advent of Internet and the convergence of technology is opening up new possibilities.
radio is increasingly becoming an integral part of the multimedia concept. Technology has brought in innovations in the hardware aspects of broadcasting. Satellite technology has rendered it possible to have digital broadcasting on direct broadcast receivers. This has triggered the need for innovations in the software generation. In shaping the radio of tomorrow cautious efforts are made by all those involved in conceiving, planning and producing to make radio programs absorbing, relevant, topical and need-based. Concerted efforts are made to identify those programming areas which are radio's forte and innovations encouraged for fully exploiting the medium's potential. Increasing attention is paid to leisure time, listening. Formats like entertaining contests, competitions, quiz shows and family serials are ingeniously exploited for enhancing listenership. Radio stations in the West have developed innovating styles and features, for example, contemporary hit radio, CRR, is a recent popular category targeting the younger audiences. Creative formats, modes, styles of presentation and publicity, are being used. Play-by-play sports, talks, interview and children's programs with a mix of education and entertainment are some popular formats. Motivation services devoted to health and nutrition, stress reduction, and personal improvement. Programs are popular. In the changes scenario, outmoded, impersonal approaches are being discarded away for a more personalized, informal and direct style, in which the listener plays an active role. Music is the backbone or mainstay of the overall radio fair. Thematic presentations, featureized formats or personalized treatment go a long way in making these programs popular among the diverse radio audiences. International hookups for sharing and exchange of ideas among specialists, political and other personalities are also being explored. All India Radio may swap airtime with Voice of America, VOA, and British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC. Air may get an equal amount of airtime on BBC's local channels in Britain. VOA cannot offer that since it has no domestic service. Both broadcasters may be given half-hour weekly slots for entertainment and lifestyle programs. Other broadcasting organizations are also likely to follow. With the expansion of technology, the possibilities of making radio programs exciting and alluring are limitless. Widening the scope of a program also opens up fresh opportunities for building up radio personalities, presenters, and anchor persons. As future radio professionals, you need to prepare yourselves to meet these challenges. Your role in making radio an interesting, creative and relevant medium of mass communication in the era of multi-channel communication is crucial. 1.7 Summary In this unit, we have discussed the concept of communication, its meaning, definition and functions. We read that any mechanical device that multiplies messages and takes them to a large number of people simultaneously is called mass communication. The media through which messages are being transmitted include radio, TV, newspapers, magazines, films, records, tape recorders, video cassette recorders, etc. We examined in detail some important characteristics of radio. It is an exclusive medium of sound and voice which is intimate, personal and mobile in nature. It is also relatively inexpensive as compared to other mass communication media. However, radio has certain inherent limitations. It is a sound-only medium, as such the listener has to use imagination. It may lead to a gap between reality and imagination. Radio programs can be made absorbing, relevant, topical and need-based. This requires conscious and deliberate efforts by and those involved in conceiving, planning and producing radio programs. While content is the key, innovative presentation skills immensely contribute to the success of a program. Special efforts to eschew rigidity and hackneyed techniques and warm, intimate and interactive approaches would prove successful. Thank you, subscribe our channel for more updates, we will see you with the next chapter.